To play Lagrima, we first start in the key of E major. And then in the B section, we're going to go to E minor. Now, as I mentioned, this is a very expressive and, and emotional piece. And two things to keep in the back of your mind about this piece and about Tariga are that he was one of the um, most prominent users of classical guitar fingernails. And he combined that with a larger full-size guitar. Um, he wasn't playing on the parlor-size guitars that were being used 100 years before he was born. And so these two things allow him to get more sound out of the guitar and more, perhaps, expressivity because you're moving from flesh to nail and um, you can dig in a little more. Now, you don't have to have a nylon string guitar or uh, nails to be able to do this, but just keep in the back of your mind that that's part of the aesthetic, if you will, of this piece. So we start with this chord configuration. First finger is going to be on the fourth string, and fourth finger is going to be on the first string. And we're just going to play... Now, the melody there is just this. Now, although we're in E major, there is a bit of sorrow in that. Now, we combine that with the bass, and we throw the accompaniment in, a quiet B string played with our index finger while we're playing the melody with our M finger. You can hear how this all comes together. And then it ends with this little B7 configuration. Where you're playing the different notes of the B7 and you're alternating them with this accompaniment B. Now I mentioned that this note is an accompaniment and you want to make sure that you keep it very quiet. You want to avoid this. It's accompaniment. It's not melody. Just keep it very quiet in the distance. Now, after you play that phrase one time, you then play it a second time. And one of the things that I'm doing here is when I'm up at the B note, when I move from here down to the F sharp, I'm doing a bit of a glissando. And it's not like you can hear every note in between the B and the F sharp. It's a little more subtle than that. So experiment with getting that sound. And I'm adding a little bit of vibrato to each of these notes. Now you can't vibrato as you would if you just had one finger on the string. You have to kind of work it into your whole hand. So just take a little look at what I'm doing and see if you can get your fingers to wiggle, if you will, in, such, in the same way. And it's kind of a whole hand sort of movement. So after you play this for the second time, Then you move up here, and you're going to play E on the 12th fret. And the melody that follows it is just going down E, D sharp, C sharp, B. At the same time, you've got a little um, bar happening and some other bass notes. Let's talk you through this because it's a little bit complicated. So you've got the third finger on the fourth string at the twelfth or the eleventh fret. So you're on C sharp and you're playing the high E. Then you're going to throw your first finger down with a little hinge bar and you're going to play the E on the third string. Then you're going to lift the third finger and you're going to move the fourth finger down one fret and you're going to play again. You're playing with your thumb and your A finger, your ring finger. And the inner voice remains the E. Now after this is done, we take the fourth finger and we move it down two frets, down to the C sharp. We're going to rebar, but we're barring here at the seventh fret. 
And we're now going to be playing the accompaniment on the second string, playing F sharp. We've got this A in the bass. Now from here, you keep the bar down and you put the third finger down. So now you're at the ninth fret here on the fourth string, playing B. And you're going to be playing two Bs, B and B. And then the accompaniment is going to be a fourth finger note, G sharp. From here, then you just slide up and make this beautiful little arpeggiated chord shape. So here, you're at the third finger on the 11th fret of the fourth string, onto fourth finger and second finger. It's kind of like an A minor chord shape. So you're coming from And in the right hand, you're playing thumb, then open E with your A finger, fourth finger on the third, or index finger, I should say, on the third string, and then second finger. From here, then you're going to slide the second finger down. It's on A, now down to G sharp. And you're going to add a B. and then an open E. Then you move down. So let me just play that whole little bit up here in its entirety before we go on. Now from here, you just go and you bar the second fret, and you're going to just play Second finger on the third string, A sharp, with a C sharp. Then a B in the bass. Lift the second finger so you can play A natural and D sharp. B7 chord, if you will. And then a little E chord. With an E in the bass. So that's the first half. And if you're playing the piece exactly as written, it repeats. So you play the A section, play it again. Now going on to the B section, we're suddenly in E minor. And I musically tend to think of this as the, the more impassioned section. So the first part, um, if you're going to make up a story, which sometimes classical musicians do to create your interpretation, how you want to be playing or what you're thinking of when you're playing these notes and what you might be trying to musically express, I maybe think that this is, you know, you're feeling sad, um, and maybe you're just reflecting on something. And then in this section, you're becoming much more impassioned. So we're going to start with an E, a B, and a G. And the melody, this G, and then we slide up to C and play a B. Here we go. Now I'm also using rest stroke to make this, uh, these two notes a little... Um, more intense sounding and lots, adding lots of vibrato. And then an open E string. So you can set up this bar at the seventh fret. Same shape as here at the end of the A section. PIM in the right hand. And then use your middle finger, M finger, to play this G. So the melody is this. Um. Let me put that all together for you. And when you play this E melody, play a low E as well. And I think here, the intensity dies down a little bit. We get back to our E minor chord. We were at our five chord here, our dominant, our tension. Ah, resolution. So from here then, we just fill in with some accompaniment that's done a little quietly here. Some thirds. So it's just I and M if I'm playing strings two and three. 
And then P and I on strings four and three. Then the thirds end when you play a low E and you play the open G and B with I and M. So, now from here we leap up and we play melody notes again. We have this E. I'm using my A finger and this E is at the 12th fret vibrating again. Now hold this down and you're going to reach out for the A, 7th fret on the 4th string with your thumb. Hold this down and then go and play a C natural with your middle finger. Hold that down, reach out and play this F sharp on the 5th string at the 9th fret with your 3rd finger. Hold that down and then play on the 10th fret of the B string, this fourth finger A. And then again, we have this chord, this B chord. So it's B, D sharp, F, and it's P-I-M. Now here we add in a little accompaniment, a B, C, B figure in eighth notes. With our thumb, just frets, um, Nine, ten, nine on the fourth string. Now again, this is accompaniment, so not too loud. Not, but. And part of the reason that you want to play this note a little quiet is because the next note that you play is another B, but you're going to play it on the open string here. So you want to have somewhat of a match. From there, when you play this open string B, you let go with the left hand. And then you're going to move over to the first string and play this F sharp with your M finger. Now we have the same figure that we had in the very opening of the piece, but we're playing it in minor now, not major. Not G sharp A, B, but G, A, B. Now here, play an open A and a D. Now we're just going down a little E minor scale here. Easy slur. And then low E and open E. So from here, just that. And again, gentle slur, not, but. Here, we're in the home stretch of the piece. So we're playing this A melody with our, or E melody with our A finger. Accompaniment, open G and B with I and M. Melody note, inner voice here, A and C with I and M. And then melody note, B with an octave B, thumb in the bass. Inner voices here, B and D, and then end on our E chord. So this section repeats also. And when you're done with the B section, then you go back and you play the A section and you end there. So the form is the A section, repeat, B section, repeat, and then the A section one time. So I'm just going to take you through the scale to the end, just so you can see how you put it all together. Again, be mindful of that melody. And there you have it.